Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. Today talking more about the Carrick exploration ship, something that a lot of people have asked constantly, in fact, uh, for me to cover. Uh, I've done some videos on the Carrick before, but we've got some more updated info on it. Some uh, questions have been answered about it. We saw the captain's quarters. Uh, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the ship, what we know, um, exploration gameplay that we might get for in the future. The Carrick is expected to be one of those sort of like top tier exploration ships in game, especially suited for long range expeditions. <laughs> The Anvil Carrack is planned to be released and in-game by the end of 2019 and with the 3.8 patch. The Carrack is in active development currently with a team of five working on it full-time in the UK studio. So what exactly is the Carrack and its role? So the main role of the ship is that of exploration, expedition, pathfinding, that sort of gameplay. The Carrack is meant to feature fuel reserves and facilities for long range duration flight, an advanced jump drive and a dedicated computer core for jump charting operations, whatever exactly that is. It's to do with exploration though and finding jump points and finding new points of interest. It's also got these sort of like powerful mapping sensors and scanners. The ship has a large range of facilities for the crew so it can stay out and operate for potentially the longest time of any ship. In lore, the Carrack was originally a military ship that's now been made available on the civilian market, and I would expect systems and choices for systems that reflect that. That it's a very high tier ship, that it's a military ship, is very focused on exploration. Self-sustaining is a word that is commonly used to describe the Carrack in lots of its media, and I would expect that it is able to solve a lot of its fuel needs. Uh, as well as sort of like its um, general repair and crew needs as it's out in the verse. So potentially it's going to be very efficient at quantum traveling. We know that there's um, the potential that power plants and batteries might also help as fuel alternatives um, in, in the future as well. They've talked about that with the Ranger being able to use a battery instead of fuel, but expect very, very efficient sort of fuel intakes for the Carrack so that it can um, sustain itself fuel-wise, quantum travel-wise. We're not entirely sure, but I would expect that it's either got incredibly efficient quantum drives or the ability to somehow obtain and gather fuel on the fly. Because that's sort of like what self-sustaining means to me, that it could potentially stay out forever in space until you need sort of like super major repairs, um, or you want to come home, or you want to stuck up and food and ammo. Maybe you can't manufacture your own ammo out in the space, uh, but you just take laser weapons or something. The ship is supposed to have a big focus towards mapping and charting courses uh, as well. Um, obviously that's part of exploration. Combat wise, the ship is more defensive in nature, sounding like it's going to be more robust and tanky, but not really designed to go toe to toe with a uh, combat capital ship. Something like a Polaris would probably uh, rip into it. It's not planned to actively engage ships like that or larger ships or large uh, wings of combat ships. It's going to have very, very powerful sort of like defenses against environmental effects and be able to travel into places other ships potentially wouldn't want to um, or wouldn't be able to. The Carrack was supposed to have some form of bridge canopy protection that had blast shields coming down to protect the cockpit window um, and then you'd be flying with sensors and remote cameras, sort of like in the way that the 890 Jumps Battle Bridge allows you to do. Again, on the bridge, uh, there's supposed to be systems for extensive scanning, mapping, charting, sensor suites, um, as well as um, obviously consoles for the pilot and co-pilots as well. Uh, so the Carrack is one of the older ships that's going to be brought into the game. So it was around the like $33 million mark they originally looked at this uh, and concepted it. So they also started designing it and concepting it before they had the sort of like newer, more um, accurate pipeline for ships. Basically, they planned the exterior for the Carrack before blocking out all the rooms. And this was something they did commonly with a lot of the older ships. This caused issues when it actually um, had the internals built out as it didn't have enough room for all the rooms and corridors and armor and internal gubbins and all of that sort of stuff to be put in. So. The current way they now build ships caters for internal rooms and space before building the exterior uh, in the concept sort of phase. With the Carrack, though, they increased its size, but then they shrank it again. And this oddly caused some controversy, even though that sort of like announcement was only talked about when they talked about its size that it's now been finalized at. So it was just a bit of a weird thing. And so they 
Um, originally had the size of the ship at around 123 meters. When it was in its white box, it grew around 40% apparently. And then they said, right, it's confirmed at going to be 125 meters in size. A lot of people just wanted it to be larger for some reason. So they decided to, to effectively shrink it again, making it more compact so that it was more fit for purpose, fit for exploration. The Carrack is a long range expedition ship and has all the facilities and systems it needs for that. Making it larger for larger sake makes no sense though. Smaller means it can land in more locations, doesn't have to worry about gravity so much as larger ships when they're landing and taking off from planets and moons. It can land on large landing pads, so it's not restricted in the same way that the 890 Jump and Reclaimer are at the moment, but only being able to land on extra large pads that only exist in Arc Corp and Hurston. Obviously, there's going to be some changes when uh, we have ship to station docking. That's true. Um, also, the ships just generally can be more efficient and use less fuel and, and all that sort of stuff and is harder to hit. The fact that it's compact means that it can be run with a relatively small crew and the ship caters for up to six players or NPCs to explore together. Though I do suspect you can probably run the ship relatively well with probably only three people. Smaller means it's harder to hit and has less mass, so it should be faster and more nimble. And as I said, more efficient fuel-wise. It has ample room for cargo, though, and its facilities. Those being, there is a medical bay of an unknown tier. I would expect it to be a tier 2, personally, so that it can treat a good range of wounds and damage, as well as stabilise patients if needed, until they can get somewhere that they could treat near-death wounds. Although, it could be better than that. It could be worse than that. That is just speculation by me. There is a vehicle bay which is now confirmed to come with an Urza rover, not an Anvil rover. There was a previous expectation that there would be some sort of Scout rover there, but it is just going to be an Urza rover. Maybe there'll be some, um, well, you'll be able to put a different rover in there, so maybe we'll have some different um, sort of rovers in the future that are more suited uh, for whatever needs that you want on the ship. There's going to be some form of repair facilities, which I'm assuming allow the repair of your snub craft and maybe the rover. Potentially, it's also to allow for the repair of the ship's components, though. Uh, there's the Pisces snub bay, so there's a little snub hangar, so you can have a ship in there. Currently, and we only know that the Pisces snub, the scout-focused ship um, that we haven't seen much of yet, uh, will be able to be in there. Um, it's also expected that you'll be able to, you know, put a P-52 or a P-72 in there. But until it's in our hands, we won't know exactly what size ship we can get in there. There is going to be a components room, engineering section, um, access to manned turrets, crew quarters, living and food areas. There's a drone bay. The Carrack has scout drones that can be remotely piloted and um, has a bay for those as well. There's uh, supposed to be a dedicated cargo bay. The ship was last listed at being able to have... 1000 SCU of cargo space, which I thought might be from some old information, and it that is does sound like quite a lot. Um, but I do reckon it could cater for 600 to 1000 SCU of cargo space if you are including the hangar and vehicle bay, with the ship maybe having 300 to 400 SCU for dedicated cargo. I mean, it's quite a large ship, and it's quite um, it's got quite a lot of depth to it, the ship as well. So expect a good cargo size, but it's currently unconfirmed exactly exactly what cargo size we're going to have um, and where you can put cargo. Will you be able to fully lock cargo into the hangar bay and the, the sort of like vehicle bay? Probably not. More recently, we saw some more of the Carrick's captain's quarters. That should help give you more of a feel for what the rest of the ship is actually going to look like internally and the style for it. The Anvil sort of like strong, robust military feel um, made a little more appropriate for extended distance. We know that Anvil very much likes at angles, but also circular motifs. The ship looks like it has three main decks and potentially a small observation deck as well at the top of the ship. The ship has large components, which are less powerful than capital components, but the ship is a lot smaller than a capital ship, and this should afford it a lot of focused options for whatever you want it to focus on. Assumedly, um, it's going to be exploration for the most part, but it's a very capable multi-role ship, and because it's got like a totally runnable with six people, for small to medium-sized groups, these are going to be great mission running ships. The large components won't require the same sort of specialised facilities that capital components need as well. Weapons wise, we don't know exactly what's going to be on the ship after it's fully reworked and in our hands, but um, last time it was listed with three size 4 man turrets and a size 4 remote turret, so it's quite possible that it could run like eight size 3 to 4 weapons on the ship. I wouldn't expect anything 
hugely damaging on it. It is more defensive um, in its sort of like combat abilities. It is supposed to be PvE typically, exploring the verse, finding some cool stuff, maybe encountering some random aliens. The compact yet featureful nature of the Karak make it very suitable for a lot of different gameplay types. Falling, it's going to be reasonably efficient at and have good cargo space. Exactly how much, we don't know yet, but based on... If, it, if it's got a thousand SE of cargo space, very good at cargo hauling because it's going to be very fuel efficient. Mission running, the ship's going to be able to handle a huge range of missions and has the facilities to support that and a small crew. It's extremely likely as well that the Carrack will be very um, good at passive radar detection. So threats like mines, small ships, and generally things that would be otherwise hard to detect, um, you should be able to detect pretty well. And you should have a good range on that. So if you were hunting down probes to destroy, you'd probably be able to detect them at quite a long range and pretty accurately without having to scan them. Again, I suspect that this detection will allow you to see more information about a target at range as well, at least see that information quicker. Exploration gameplay is the main focus here though, because, you know, it's Carrick. It's the top tier exploration ship. It's a beast of a topic though, so... I want to talk briefly how I think the Carrack fits into that role and what it's going to be able to do exploration-wise and some of the things that I think touch on exploration. It's certainly going to cross over into other roles um, in the game though, the Carrack and exploration, like science, farming, base building, mining, fuel gathering. That's all sort of part of exploring the game, exploring the verse, finding things. Uh, scanning down points of interest is probably one of the more major roles I expect that explorer and scout ships will have, using their scanners to find interesting areas of space, derelicts, anomalies, pirate bases, mineable resources, but also finding outposts, ships, mines, ground vehicles, enemy fleets, that sort of stuff. Information and locational data is going to be extremely valuable in Star Citizen. That could be the location of an asteroid field or where an enemy fleet is. There is also the expectation that you'd be able to quantum travel directly to these locations once you found them and like you save the data or drop a beacon so that you can travel to them later. That is some gameplay that we are obviously direly waiting for. Once you are at a location, there might be more that you can do though. There could be the potential um, that you found a new jump point. So that's, that's something you might need to map um, or you might actually have to go travel through it or whatever. If you're on a planet or a moon or found asteroids, you might better then survey that area to find out what mineral wealth is there or what resources are there. I would expect there'd be exploration focused missions and that's gonna be some of the bread and butter for people. So um, interesting sort of like go and discover these things over there we've uh, had reports about an anomaly we want you to get information on some animals on this planet or plants or um, go to these planets and um, scan the geological features go find caves and cave networks D just yeah general geological features and mountains and things like that but also just general points of interest uh, and you can have loads and loads and loads of missions tied to that but you could also just have general encounters and events which sort of like are used to piggyback and jump around so that you can get further and further out into the system and then sort of like exploration becomes well there are more interesting or different events based on how far away you are from the sort of like the beaten track and how far you are from the edge of the system that you previously were able to jump to so the power of the Carrack for me is its long-range self-sustainability, powerful scanners, and ability to do a bit of everything, as well as being strong enough to survive what the verse throws at it. And I suspect that it's going to have some quite powerful environmental protections, or at least the ability to fit things like that. We need the ability to find new points of interest that the procedural sort of like um, system for missions and content should be able to cater for and create but we also need the ways to save and map those areas. Some of the things you might scan down could just be interesting encounters. Um, others, they might be valuable to return to as locations. The Carrack should be able to get to these points of interest much um, faster, much further away, much more efficiently, and go much further out into a system than any other ship could hope of doing so. Meaning it's very possible that there are points of interest, missions and encounters that change based on how far you are out. That's sort of what I was trying to say a minute ago, but more rambly. Uh, and there should be um, changes from exactly what you encounter from system to system. If you found an entirely new system, which is a, a, a possibility at some point in Star, uh, Star Citizen, there are ads sort of that sort of exploration level, that's going to be very, very interesting and very cool. Uh, I'd also expect to be jumping from point of interest to point of interest um, so that you get further out in a system and don't use your conventional engines. It's not going to be you just going full thrust a thousand meters a second in a straight line until something happens. It's going to be much more sort of like, uh, I suspect anyway, that you scan things, you go, oh, there's um, something is detected here. It's a weird signal. 
bam, what's here? Oh, it's some asteroids. It wasn't anything interesting. But you're now significantly far out in the system, and you keep on keep on scanning things down like that. The scout craft and rover also will allow you to explore areas that the Carrick might not be able to get into itself. And I suspect there's going to be a lot of gameplay involved with that, exploring on the ground and exploring around asteroid fields. Maybe you've detected some interesting treasure. I am very excited for the Carrick. For when it's released in 3.8, I doubt it's going to have much um, more in the way of exploration yet. They are starting to build this sort of like dynamic mission system and encounters for uh, the game. So there might be some interesting things that the character is more suited to. And it's going to be a, a very capable multi-role ship um, when it's released in 3.8. But... Um, assuming that it's balanced correctly, that is. Obviously, there might be bugs or it might have holes in its shield or something, which means it just gets absolutely wrecked, or maybe it's super OP. But, um, yeah, assuming that it's balanced correctly, then I suspect it'll be a, a reasonably fun multi-role ship. But I'm looking forward to more and more gameplay that make use of its scanners and, uh, and that sort of stuff. So, yeah, uh, I, with this video, uh, I sort of, like, went a bit not scripted at all. So I just had some talking points, just little bullet points, and I sort of, like, just chatted uh, about the character. So I hope you liked that sort of style of video. Um, if you don't, then please tell me. If you do, then please tell me. If you're sort of indifferent, you just wanted some information about the character and just to chat and listen to my voice, cool. Um, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Oh, actually, the Carrick, last time it went on sale, it was $400, I believe. Uh, and that was the Anniversary Expo was the last time it was on sale uh, in 2018. And I would expect it to go on sale again from the 23rd of November, which is CitizenCon and the start of the um, Anvil Anniversary Expo from around $400 to $500. Um, could be exactly the same price as last time. Could be a bit more because it's almost completed. So um, we'll have to wait and see. But whatever your thoughts on the Carrick and Exploration, I'd love to hear from you Every in the month comments we have below. a giveaway for August. Whatever. We are giving away a Drake Corsair bundled with an 8-inch Fire Tablet and 12 months of Game Glass. Game Glass makes software allowing you to turn touchscreen devices like tablets and mobiles into immersive controllers for Star Citizen. But not just Star Citizen, Elite Dangerous is getting support next and there's plans for lots more games to support this. You can use Game Glass for free, but there are paid options as well, giving you even more functionality. Please follow the links um, down below to uh, get more info or to download. I'm still also shilling for NordVPN. If you're looking for a VPN, they are very cheap and have many benefits over free services. They help protect you and your privacy online, but it also makes it easier to access various websites as well. And there's Shadow 2, giving you remote access to a Windows 10 gaming PC of your very own so that you can effectively turn any appropriate device, your smartphone, a uh, computer, a laptop, whatever, into this much more beefy machine. Subscription cloud services, in my opinion, are the way forward. And for some are going to be very appealing instead of sort of maintaining their own PC. For all of those, please follow the links below or use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. A massive thank you for watching. Please consider liking and sharing this content as well as pressing the bell icon to get informed when a video goes live. Consider Patreon or becoming a YouTube member too if you'd like to further support the channel. Thanks for watching guys. Please take care and I'll see you in the verse.